Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Here is Terry and Tim Sturby singing, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Since I stopped The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy inerrant word, in order that we might find the answers. Question number one, isn't it more important that we pray in Jesus' name rather than in Christ's name? Both the names Jesus and Christ are vitally important in our understanding of who the second person of the divine trinity is who came into our world to die upon Calvary's cross. We have it from the angel, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Je uh, Jesus, taken from the Old Testament name Joshua, is meaning salvation. He shall save his people from their sins. Christ is the equivalent in Greek of the Hebrew word Messiah and both of those mean the anointed one. So we have it, Jesus, the anointed one. 
But in the first century world and at other times, there were others who were anointed, for example, priests in both the, uh, in the ta tabernacle and temple of the Jews, as well as kings, they were anointed. And you could say that they were Christus. And so we need to be very careful that we name Jesus, I believe. And I wonder often at the hesitancy of believers to name the name of Jesus. I hear a lot about God. I hear a lot about the, uh, the Christians. But strangely, the name Jesus seems to be one that people are hesitant to name. It should not be. And so here we come to John chapter 14 and verses 13 and 14 begins us. And Jesus is saying, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Then again in John chapter 15 and verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give you. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, the Apostle Paul says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, not simply Christ as Lord, that is the anointed, but specifically Jesus, the one who was sent and the one who was given by the angel the name Jesus. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3 again, specifically names Jesus as Jesus and not just as Christ. Here we have the Apostle Paul in very serious conversation. He says, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It would be a very different thing if, it was to, if Paul was to have said Christ is accursed or Christ is Lord. But when Paul specifically says Jesus Jesus, Jesus is Lord. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. That is what needs to be done. And so, dear friend, don't hesitate to name the name of Jesus, that beautiful name by which we come before our Heavenly Father, the, the one who has provided us this marvelous access. Question number two, who was the angel of the Lord in the Bible. Was it Jesus? There are numerous examples of the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament. Let me underscore quickly that the word angel, angelos in Greek and moach in Hebrew, it means not simply what we understand as angel, but also as messenger, the messenger of the Lord. In Exodus chapter 3 and verses 2 and 6, Moses is at the burning bush in the wilderness, and we read, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. Verse 6, the angel of the Lord says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. We have the name given, the angel of the Lord, but immediately there is this understanding that this is no ordinary angel, not even an archangel. This is the Lord himself. We fast forward to Joshua. Joshua, as he is leading the people into the promised land, chapter 5 and verses 13 to 15, once again, Joshua, he lifts up his eyes and a man was standing opposite him. 
with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? He said, No, rather I indeed come now as captain of the host of the Lord. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and bowed down and said to him, What has my Lord to say to his servants? Joshua was in a position of worship, and this angel or this captain of the host of the Lord does not say, Get up, Joshua, you're not supposed to worship anyone but the Lord. The angel or the captain leaves Joshua right there and he says, Now take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. One more and we go to Judges chapter 6 and verses 24 to uh, 22 to 24. And it's the story of Gideon. Gideon saw that he was the angel of the Lord that had spoken to him. And he said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord said to him, Pay Peace to you, do not fear, you shall not die. Gideon, he believed that having seen the Lord, that he would perish. Is this Jesus? I believe that it was a pre-incarnation, visible appearance of the Son of God who was rightly worshipped by these individuals who came into this world to bring a message from the Father in order that there might be direction at these key points of time. At other times there are angels who appear, but this one is different. This one is very different and it's rightly appropriate that we understand this to be a pre-incarnation, a pre-Bethlehem appearance of him who would come to be our savior. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. The male quartet comes to sing, since Jesus came into my heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. My heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. I Cease from my wanderings and going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into, came into my heart. Since Jesus came into, came into. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt Now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into, came into my heart Since Jesus came into, came into my heart 
Songs of joy, O oh my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, there's a light in the valley of death now for me. Since Jesus came into my heart, and the gates of the city beyond I can see. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea. Faith to Live By Resources has prepared this brand new Christmas CD, Silent Night. 13 songs of Christmas, as well as six scripture readings of this Christmas story. You will want to have a copy of this and it's free and postage paid for you to have simply upon your request. I also want to mention our 2024 scripture text scenic calendar. It's so beautiful, you will want to have it on the wall of your home. I know you will enjoy it, and it's yours also, free and postage paid simply upon your request. Ask for the CD and the calendar. We would be glad to send them to you just as long as our limited supply lasts. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also call us toll-free 1-833-367-3852 or use our website faithtoliveby.ca and use the contact us feature that is found there. Heidi, Dorothy, and Jan sing all creatures of our God and King.
this first epistle is speaking to people who have endured heavy trials. And he is speaking to them this word that even more difficult trials may well be on ahead. Does that mean that they are given a pass for how they are to live? Does that mean that they can just hunker down and do as they wish because God will look the other way? Oh, you're, you're going through a difficult time, so just, just sit on the sidelines. Peter says that these who are going through these various trials are to continue to silence the opposition. They are con to continue not to take a pass or not to sit on the sidelines, but their conduct, even in these days in which they pass, they are to demonstrate the glory of God. In 1 Peter chapter 2, I begin with verse 13. Peter has an action plan, I call it, for how they are to live and how they are to conduct themselves in present circumstances. They aren't simply to wait for better days and then start to honor God and to do as he would wish them to. But in the midst of every circumstance, whether the sun is shining or whether it's all overcast and gray, whether the thunderbolts come down repeatedly, Peter says, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether as to a king as the one in authority or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. Hear this, for such is the will of God that by doing right, not simply by what we say, but by what we do. For such is the will of God that by doing what is right, you may silence the ignorance of foolish men, those who speak evil of you, that their mouths may be stopped because they see how you conduct yourselves even in these times, that your faith means something more than just talk, 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 that there is something deep within your hearts that has gripped you, and that even in trial and difficulty, you are held firm, that you are held steady by your confidence in Christ. Peter says, act as free men, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. Do not use your freedom in order to excuse what you do and say, oh, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm a free man and I can do as I like. Rather, having become the Lord's freeman, you are also his bond slaves to do his bidding. Peter says, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And he says, servants, and how many servants there were in that first century world? How very many there were, and Peter, he addresses them as well. Be submissive to your masters with all respect. Why? Why should we do that? Peter says, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. I suspect that every servant who has ever had a master has found them to be unreasonable. Peter, why should we listen to you? Peter says, for this, this right here finds favor, if for the sake of conscience toward God, a person bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. Not that they are a criminal or a thief, that they are a thug, and they are suffering as a result of that, but when they're doing their best, when they are doing everything that has been asked of them, and perhaps more, and yet they are ill-treated, Peter says, this right here finds favor if for the sake of conscience toward God a person bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. 
For what credit is there if, when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if, when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure. Peter's really speaking pretty sternly to these ones. You are doing what is right and you suffer for it and you patiently endure. This finds favor with God. This finds favor with God. It reminds us of what Jesus Christ did when he came into this world. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. His, uh, his own pushed him aside. They treated him as a liar, as, as a lunatic. His own family, his own brothers wanted to get a hold of him and silence him because they thought he was discrediting, he was embarrassing them. Jesus, he came into this world to proclaim the love of God. He came into this world with hands wide open. He, above anyone, suffered unjustly. He, the pure, he, the righteous, for us, the defiled, for us, the unrighteous. But yet, he has been mag magnificently exalted to the right hand of the Father on high. He is our great redeemer, and he is also our great example. Here, Peter says, when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure. I know that I speak to many. You're going through a struggle. Oh, dear friend, the Lord sees, the Lord knows, the Lord cares. The Lord is with you in that time of struggle. Patiently endure and know that the reward is assuredly on ahead. He will reward his own. He keeps the count. He keeps the record. And he will bless. He will watch over you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.